When we're doing functional medicine, oftentimes, we always begin with a good quality multivitamin. And for me, I always educate the patient, food is your medicine. It's not being dependent on an additional three, 10 supplements. Almost everybody benefits from some methylation support. And I think that's because it facilitates better detoxification. As we've seen a higher environmental burden on the pathway of methylation, you can see that where we do find individuals who have genetic SNPs, that maybe they are what we would call a poor methylator or not as high functioning in methylation. I can literally see patients who, you know, they may come in for fatigue or exhaustion and you may give them some methylators and they walk in the first month and they're like, oh my gosh, my cycles are regular, I'm focusing, the brain fog is gone, my son is speaking who has autism, and then over three months, six months, all of a sudden they can come in and say, you know, I have problems in my joints or my tendons or that same umph of energy that I got initially, I don't feel it the same way. So you see that the pathways are all connected to other pathways and sometimes it's almost like priming a bicycle. You get it going and you're like, wow, I feel the speed in the air next to me and then it begins to slow down, you start getting tired. So we do see that we can create problems in methylation by not supporting distant pathways. I've had to learn through the years that single ingredients don't always work well. And it's far better to use smaller concentrations of ingredients and to really um, support all the cofactors that seem to be involved. And when I say cofactors, I, I mean like complete B vitamins or complete minerals and trace minerals rather than just a high dose of one mineral. And looking at things in broad perspectives like not just using omega-3s, but sometimes omega-7s, smaller dosages, and be patient. Be in there for the endurance factor, which is its lifestyle. Folate's actually a very complicated B vitamin. And so as we understand, there's many more polymorphisms in folic acid than just the MTHFR polymorphism. We've seen as the genotypes come in, dihydrofolic acid reductase gene defects, so this enzyme DHFR is a big part of activating just dietary folate into other intermediate forms. So folinic acid or tetrahydrofolate or formal folate is almost like a precursor to producing methylfolate. And so for some patients who, for example, have a comped homozygote defect where they do not tolerate methylfolate, but they need that extra support of folic acid, you can give them folinic acid and kind of with a concentration gradient, kind of push the forward reaction towards producing more methylfolate. And there are people, for example, who have fast enzymes, like an MTHFR, A129AC. Well, there are people that are burning up their folic acid really fast. They almost dep deplete their intracellular folic acid. So they do remarkably well on formal folate, also called folinic acid. Because embryogenesis is such an important element in terms of fetal development and trying to protect that child from future problems in DNA instability, really the methylfolic acid, we don't have every um, genotype out there. We don't know every mommy whether she can methylate well or not. So because this is a single step enzyme, it's, it's, it's a forward reaction only. It doesn't go in reverse. It is prudent to use methylfolate as soon as a wo woman is even thinking about getting pregnant. And because the neurological element of development really occurs in the first two weeks, you want to get that guy on board as quickly as possible. And even if you've missed the window, certainly beautiful evidence is out there saying even while a woman is breastfeeding, we're still seeing beautiful outcome studies on neurological development and cognitive function in these babies in the first year of life. So it's never too late. And yes, I don't have a problem with folic acid, but I have no problem adding the methylfolate to support that female. What it's exciting is that we are really on the cutting edge. There's new data coming out every day. There's larger population studies presenting themselves, connecting certain disease states that we've never really understood that we can manipulate by helping with methylation. And while there are plenty of gene mutations out there, many people don't understand somehow the folic acid, because it's like an on and off switch, 
even though it may not be the cause of a disease, you can shape epigenetic effects by supporting on and off reactions. So in the clinic, I'm so excited to see people come in with various chronic diseases, be it diabetes, be it high cholesterol. And once you begin to support the pathways of methylation, not just fully, but the pathways, you see cholesterol improves, you see cognition improve. Little folic acid, tiny things get better that make a difference in your lifestyle and how you feel.